the androgynous human being in whom there is a spiritual union of male and female attributes has been widely accepted as personifying a superior type capable of a greater understanding of the father wisdom and mother love potencies of divinity. Such symbolism, ladies and gentlemen, existed in all of the great esoteric orders of the past. While ethnologists may be reluctant to admit that the Indians had any formal concept of an esoteric religion, examination into the secret beliefs of the priests of the various tribes shows that they were verging toward the adept tradition, even if it had not matured among them. The Midawiwin, our great medicine society of the Ojibwes, initiated both men and women into the secrets of the art of healing and the control of the vital current coursing through the nerve centers of the human body. The society of the Medes, or shamans, had birch bark rolls which depicted the arrangements of the lodges and included many strange pictographs. Of these, W. J. Hoffman writes, quote, To persons acquainted with secret societies, a good comparison for the Medawiwin charts would be what is called a trestle board of the Masonic order, which is printed and published and publicly exposed without exhibiting any secrets of the order. Yet, it is not only significant, but useful to the esoteric in assistance to their memory as to the details of the ceremony." Unquote. The secrets of the Midawiwin were originally communicated to mankind by an initiate priest, Manabozo, or Great Rabbit, who was a servant of the Good Spirit. The cross was an important symbol in the Midawiwin rites and it is interesting that the Midis steadfastly refused to give up their religion and be converted to Christianity. The controversy as to the possible Masonic significance of the Midwiwin rites may be noted, but has slight bearing upon the essential facts. Although the birch bark rolls have bestowed prominence upon the activities of this society, other tribes practiced equally significant rituals and ceremonies. Candidates advanced through four degrees, traveling toward the east. And where have you heard that before, steady listeners? And the lodge rooms were enclosures open to the sky and connecting with each other through doors and passageways so that they could look upon the celestial sphere. The neophyte was tested and subjected to trials and hazards and also was presented with a sequence of visual arrangements of symbols and other esoteric paraphernalia. The purpose of the Great Medicine Society was to enlighten the human mind and soul and to bind the initiates to the service of their people. It included a method for stimulating extrasensory perceptions and a personal investigation into the secrets of nature. In 1919, Arthur C. Parker was invited into a secret lodge of the Senecas to witness their ceremonies. Here he heard the legend of Red Hand, a culture hero, who could hold conversation with the Great Mystery. From the Great Mystery he learned to love all the creatures of the earth, and he spoke the language of the birds and animals. Red Hand was slain by a poisoned arrow because he would not reveal to his assassin the secret of his spiritual power. The animals discovering by the power of scent that their brother friend had been killed, gathered in council about his body to find a means of bringing him back to life. Each of the creatures gave part of himself to restore Red Hand to the living. At last the bear came forward and, grasping the hand of the martyred hero, raised him by the strong grip of his paw. Those acquainted with the ritual of the third degree of the Blue Lodge of Freemasonry will realize that this story must have originated among the rituals of the esoteric schools because it is the exact same ceremony of the raising of the Master Mason at the end of the initiation of the third degree by the grip of the lion's paw. Mr. Parker himself, a 32nd degree Freemason, sums up the account of his experience in the rites of the Senecas thusly. Quote, Little has been told. The door has only been held ajar the slightest space, and no, no secrets have been revealed. There were feather wands and deer skins, but no purple robes or crowns. Yet who shall say that the Senecas have not the thread of the legend of Osiris, or that they have not an inherent Freemasonry? Unquote. And indeed, who can say? 
in the area centering in what is now New York State and extending north and south a considerable distance, the five, later six nations comprising the Iroquois League attained a high state of social and political integrity. The two great leaders of these Amerinds were Deganoida and Hiawatha. It is impossible to study the life of Deganoida, whose coming was announced by a mysterious visitor from the heaven world, without realizing that he fulfilled all the requirements of the adept tradition. Deganoida was born of an immaculate conception. Let me say that again for you folks. Deganoida was born of an immaculate conception, possessed the power to work miracles, prayed and fasted, practiced the vigils, was confirmed in his mission by the Great Father, and passed through numerous trials and persecutions. Hiawatha became his first and most distinguished disciple, and these two, working together, sought to establish everlasting peace among their peoples. The founder of the Inca dynasty of Peru was the initiate statesman Manco Capac, who flourished in the 11th century A.D. He reformed the social and religious life of the tribes of the Aymara, Quechua race in the capital city of Cusco, which he built. Manco Capac established the religion of the sun. He was a statesman of ability and claimed to be a direct descendant of the sun god. The empire of the Incas, which he founded, is remembered especially for its experiments in socialized living. Peru has the distinction of having cradled the first successful utopia. And folks, I would argue with that. If it was so successful, where is it today? Manly P. Hall probably would disagree with that, saying that for its time, it was a successful utopia. Utopia means perfect, folks. It means the best. It means the fulfillment of all the ideals. It could never pass away if it was in fact, a successful utopia. And that's the problem with these priests of the mystery religion and their dream of a world utopia made up of imperfect men, ruled by imperfect men who have other agendas, who have selfishness, who covet, who steal and lie. We all struggle with those things every day. Anyone who stands before me and tells me that they do not struggle with these imperfections of man and with the temptations of the material world and of the flesh, then I see before me a liar. Manco Capac emerges as one of the world's outstanding social reformers, with a vision thousands of years ahead of his time. He is said to have brought with him to Peru a divine bird in a sacred wicker hamper, this golden falcon is a form of the phoenix and testifies to the presence of the adept doctrine. Manco Capac combines in his own person the offices of priest and king, like the Melchizedeks of Christian mysticism. Christian mysticism? Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, you didn't know this, but Christianity started out as a secret society, and later, later was even named the Friendly, open, secret society. It wasn't open at all. And it had degrees of initiation which exist in the priesthood even today. Although some historians may be a trifle impulsive when they suggest that Manco Capac was a Buddhist priest, there can be no doubt that the Peruvian culture was heavily influenced by symbols, rituals, and philosophical elements usually associated with the trans Himalayan area of Central Asia. Now, if Manco Capac was not a Buddhist priest from the Far East, how did he bring these teachings to the Indian people, who had never seen or heard of him before and knew not from which he came? In Deganoida, with his great league, Quetzalcoatl, Kukulkan, and his splendid socialized empires in Mexico and Central America, and Manco Capac, and the communal system which he set up in Peru, we have three clear and definite accounts of initiate leaders establishing schools of esoteric doctrines in the Western Hemisphere. From a consideration of their attainments and the systems which they inaugurated, 